Yo, man, uh, see that girl over there? She's really hot. She's she's walking kind of fast, though. I don't know, like, she's... Sh should, I, should I go, like... Here we go! I don't know, she's walking too fast. I don't want to run after her anyways. I don't want to run after her. But she's... I don't know. Do like, you think she's hot? Do you think she's hot? I don't know. Sarah from last week was hotter, right? You know what? <laughs> Fuck that. She wasn't hot enough. She wasn't hot enough. I don't know. And she was, like, well, she was on her phone. I saw her like this. Like, I don't know like, how to get a girl off her phone. I mean, I could just do this. I could just do this to get her off the phone. But you know what? That's too much work. I'm not going to do that. Plus, she was... I think she, that guy was, was walking beside her. I don't know if they know each other, but the guy was walking beside her. Maybe it was, like, her boyfriend or something. I don't know. They're walking, like... Like kind of close proximity. I, I'm not even gonna go and find out. I'm not gonna investigate because for sure that was like a guy she was with. So I'm just gonna forget that, man. Besides, you know, I got stuff I gotta do. I mean, we have to like leave to get food in like 30 minutes, and I don't have a lot of time. Like 30 minutes from now, so um, I, I don't have time to like go talk to a girl. That's gonna take too long. Like I'm gonna talk to her. And she's gonna wanna hang out with me and go on a date with me right now, an instant date. Like obviously I couldn't like just get her phone number really quickly. I can't do that. You know, I, I don't want to use up all my hellos, my opens. I only have five opens left today. I only have five opens left today, and I don't want to use up all of my opens today because I'm going to run out of opens, you know? Like, I got to save them. I got to save them when they really count. I got to save my opens for, like, when they really matter so I don't have too many opens. Are you afraid of going out solos? The idea of going out alone, nobody else there, scare you. Let me tell you, I've been doing this for 11 years. In the first three years of my life, I went out alone. I had no friends. Let me tell you, I was terrified about the thought of it. It just scared the life out of me. I was literally shaking in my boots. So I thought we'd come back to Montreal, my hometown, like give you some ideas about how I first started going out alone. And also the motivation of what made me do it. I'll give you some tools and techniques to help you go out alone. So you're not scared anymore. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to feel uncomfortable if people are gonna be looking at you. You don't have to be worried that you're gonna just be standing there the awkward kid in the crowd, okay? That's the initial fear you have, but it's not accurate. In reality, I'm gonna show you by the end of this video how to go out so nobody even cares that you're there. They're not like thinking about you. They're, you're gonna see they're concerned about their own selves and their own uh, image, their egos. People think they're cool. And you're also gonna see that you can go out and not know many people in the venue, but create a little social circle every single night as a home base and that allows you to just feel comfortable and relax in the environment. So we're gonna go into that in some detail right now. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a background as to why I started even going out alone. People always ask me, Madison, did you get the courage or the motivation to do it because you were inspired? And uh, the truth is, nothing can be further from that. It was absolutely not inspiration. It was not courage. It was actually out of desperation. So I started off being so afraid to even talk to women. I had no idea how to interact with dudes, talk to them about sports. I had no clue what it was even, what it even looked like. And women on my life just kind of traumatized me and tortured me when I was growing up. This spot and this bush is the story that has inspired tens of thousands of people. It's where I hid the clues to give the bracelet of the girl that I fell in love with for two years. So the story is I had the girl I love for two years, my best friend, go over to her house all the time. Her mom knows me, like we're, she, her mom loves me. And I love this girl, but I'm only, only, only a friend to her and that's all I ever am. So on her birthday, I decided to save all my money. I buy a bracelet at the mall, I hide it in the bushes with some clues. We get here, we go through all the clues, like a little scavenger hunt. She's like, oh, okay, this is weird, what is this? It's like 10 o'clock at night, right? Picture this in the dark. And eventually I go down on one knee here, I show her the bracelet, I'm like, I care about you so much, I love you, and I wanna be with you. And then she, <laughs> in a typical voice, and she goes, I care about you so much as a friend, and I just don't see you like that. Don't see you like that, don't see you. And as I stand in this park here, I can see how that would echo 
through the trees and kill all the wildlife in the area, the absence of love. But um, this is where I kind of started this pattern of loving people who didn't love me back and constantly pursuing women who were not interested in me and friend zoning myself by showing so much love like a Disney movie and not really understanding what, what caused attraction. So this was a very, very important part in you being able to even watch this video. If that did not happen here, this video couldn't happen for you. And so what I want you to get from the story is take the lemons in your life, the bad situations that have happened, and try to make some lemonade out of it. If not for yourself, maybe you can benefit the experiences and the lives of other people. Continue with our little trip down memory lane. Here is where I did my first daytime approach. Went to the cafe, saw a lady there with a little keychain and a little uh, Hot Wheels car on it. Proceeds to ask her about the car on her keychain and palm read her. Yes, I tried palm reading. Imagine how creepy that was to have a guy holding your hand who doesn't know you, holding your hand for an extended period of time when you're trying to work. And a line of people will like, pile up behind me waiting to get their coffee. And this is one of my first experiences. It was embarrassing. It was so bad that I could not go back to this cafe for three years because I was embarrassed, A, and B, because she gave me a fake phone number when I finally got her number. Couldn't go back there. And that was just one of the things I was willing to risk to get good at this. And I did this alone all the time, wandering these streets for hours on end alone, trying to make conversation with people and get out of my head. And this, my friends, is West Mount Park, where I grew up as a young child and had my first rejection in front of all the school. It was back in grade four. There was a girl that I really liked. She happened to be the school bully's girlfriend. You might have heard the story before. I told my best friend, I really like this girl. He's like, all right, I'll keep it a secret. He did not, he told everybody. Last day of school, the friends of the bully take me arm by arm and hang me up in the coat room. And the girl comes up to me, she says, I heard that you like me. How dare you uh, like me? And he goes, Psh, slaps me in front of the face in front of the whole school, putting me in my place, letting me know I don't even match up to the standard of being a guy that would be interested in her. And that's where it all started, right? Back at this place in grade four. The idea that I could never be enough for a girl that I liked, and also the idea that I should stay in my place. So in stories of my life with women just torturing me, I was absolutely just out of ideas. I said, what can I do, man? I gotta do something. That's where I discovered this seduction community or attraction community. And when I discovered that, it gave me a little bit of options. Not even hope. I was like, man, my life is horrible. I'm so depressed. I'm so at the edge here. I wasn't suicidal, but I was like, I gotta get out of this because I can't go on one more day living like this. And I lost a lot of friends along the way. And it was really hard on me. You know, imagine having two friends and all of a sudden when you learn the stuff, they think you're acting weird talking to strangers. So now you're down to zero friends and now you have negative <laughs> friends and you're like, man, I'm, is this ever going to get better? But again, the thing that kept me on the path was I had no choice. My life was something I wasn't in control of, social life, didn't have a lot of friends, didn't have people who were in my corner, uh, didn't have people supporting me, um, didn't know how to make conversations, felt very awkward when I was in public. So I just had to do something about it. And that desperation is ultimately what drove me. Despite the nice lady in the background with the dog, this is a spot in my life where I learned that you can't always depend on friends and that you gotta depend on yourself. So it was here many, many years ago that a friend that I hung out with every day for about two years betrayed me. He eventually joined alliances with some tough guy um, and they came to this spot and they tried to rob me for my money, they tried to steal my bicycle and they uh, beat me up and tried to take everything I had, okay? Uh, pulled my sweater over my shirt, pounded me, and then I was like waiting for my friend to come to my rescue, did not at all, and just allowed it to happen. I later left and had to go get the cops to try to get my bike back and go to court and all this stuff. And it's at this moment I learned that you can't really rely on friends uh, in terms of always being there. You gotta be there for yourself. Only you can shape your life and you have to depend on you. So with all this heartbreak, you can imagine I had to do something, right? Like I experienced so much of it uh, in my youth from the ages of let's say seven to like 20, 21, I experienced so much of it. Even as in my early 20s, I continue to experience it. And these formed the building blocks of what I wanted to change. I knew that I never wanted to be in these situations again. And that would be whether somebody went out with me and had fun with me and like traveled with me and went to clubs and met new people, or nobody would do it with me. I had to do it somehow, some way, right? When you're in such bad situations and you promise yourself you never want to be in those situations again, it's like, what are, you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You gotta do something, okay? So I made a commitment 
a absolute commitment and decision that I was gonna go out solo. And you know, Tony Robbins says decisions are where you cut off all other possibilities and options. So for me, it was like I cut off the possibility of staying home alone. I cut off that possibility. I cut off the possibility of not doing anything. I had to do something, right? So I made a complete decision that I had to take action. And I committed to taking this action whether I was gonna get a result or not. You might say, oh, I don't wanna go out solo because if I go out solo, I might not be good at it. It doesn't matter. You commit to doing it regardless of how you feel. You commit to doing it for a certain amount of time, whether it's, uh, you know, three months or six months, however long it is, you commit to it regardless of how you feel or the instant result. It's not about instant gratification, it's about committing to a long-term plan, all right? So you gotta do that right now. Before I even give you the tips of the tricks on how to go out solo, you gotta commit to that long-term plan because if you don't commit to it, then you're just gonna be like, oh, I don't have results in the week that I want, so forget this and just give up. It's all about committing to a long-term goal and strategy. Let's get down to the nitty gritty with some tips and tricks to help you go out alone. The first part is just getting out of your house. Now you're not gonna get out of your house unless you have a predetermined plan of where you're gonna go to. You might say, oh, it's Thursday night, I'm gonna go out, but then Thursday night comes around, you're in your pajamas, you're comfortable, and you don't wanna go anywhere. So make sure you know exactly where you're gonna go. Literally write down, make a list for every day of the week, those particular days, where you're gonna go. And then write down what time you're gonna go there. Next to every single one. Write down who are you gonna go with, if anybody, probably yourself. Write down the name of the bouncer or the security guy so you know it. So you know who you're gonna go to for guest list, you know what to say to the first guy when you walk in the front door. You know all that. Once you make it easy on yourself to know where you're going to go and what time you're gonna get there, a lot of the thought processes that clearly like, jumble up your mind and just turn to excuses won't even be there. Another thing is know what shirt you're gonna wear. Literally, it sounds so silly, but write that down. What shirt are you gonna wear when you go out? What are your shoes? Have them lined up for you, either on a coat rack for your shirt or the shoes at the front door. And it sounds silly, but again, like it's going to the gym, right? Same thing. You wanna to go to the gym, you have to have your workout clothes prepared in advance. Or else what happens that day when you're supposed to go to the gym, you say to yourself, ah, I'm just not gonna do it. What am I even gonna wear? What am I gonna put on? Who knows, oh, I gotta wash my clothes. I don't feel like doing that. And just nothing happens, you procrastinate, procrastinate, right? So again, shoes you're gonna to have to go to the club, Put them there. Shirt you're gonna wear? No question, put it there. Now myself, I would just have one shirt that I would wear all the time. It'd be like a V-neck from Zara. And if I had that, I know that I would always wear that outfit. It took all the decisions out of it. Kind of like Steve Jobs, I think he wore a lot of turtlenecks and blacks for that exact same reason. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have to worry about what you're gonna wear. It reserves that mental energy for things that actually matter. Next, you're gonna have a going out ritual. Everybody has one of these. Uh, if you don't, you're really missing out. My ritual is pretty simple and you can make your own. My ritual is play a song on my phone when I was in the shower, shower up my favorite soap, you know, have my shirt, be like t-shirt time, just like Jersey Shore. And then once I get out, me and my buddies uh, sometimes would play rock band uh, on the PS3 or PS4, whatever it was. That was a great game. We'd play that, get pumped up, and we'd have like vodka shots uh, with ice, just straight up vodka shots with ice and water. We'd drink that. And then we'd have these like little plastic glasses we'd walk to the club with just drinking something. You know, we had a little ritual. And I don't drink anymore when I go out, but at least that routine of like getting the party going was, was fun enough to inspire us while we were at home. And then we could eventually go outside the house because we were pumped up already. You know, we didn't wait for the party to start. When we were at the club, the party starts in your house. So that's the key phrase right there, write that down. The party starts when you're in your house. And that way you have that warming up ritual. And it's just natural that you want to go out when you're in a good mood. Because you can't see yourself going out when you're in a bad mood. This doesn't happen, right? You're not gonna to want to go out in a bad mood. But you're more likely to want to go out when you're in a good mood. So put yourself into a good mood, make yourself comfortable, make yourself having fun at your house, and then head out. So tip number three when it comes to going out alone is make friends with people on the way to the club and outside the club before you even get inside, okay? Pick a place that's gonna be your home base. This is gonna be the club that you go to every Thursday, Friday, or every Friday and Saturday that you go to, okay? Make it one location and go there every weekend. And once you have to go to this place, you're gonna have a bus driver that you might see very often because people usually work the same shifts. You might have a bouncer at the front door who you get to know by name. And don't just know him by name on the way in, also know him by name on the way out. Remember his name, write it in your notepad. Say, hey man, how was your night? He's like, oh yeah, it was good. Get in conversation with him, shake his hand, ask him if he wants some water, you'll go grab him a water, whatever from inside. Just see how his night's going. Make friends with him. Also the coat check girl, who's usually super bored because she's dealing with jerks every night. that are like, hey, here's my coat. I can't find my ticket, blah, blah, blah. She's dealing with those guys all the time. She's pissed off. She's not having a great night. Get to know her a little bit. Make friends with her. Put a smile on her face. That is your challenge, okay? Make friends with all these people. 
to do that, you also make sure you go into the club at a good time. If you're running in there at 1230 where the club's already bumping, nobody has time to talk to you, right? So you got to go there a little bit earlier, say 1030 or around the time, make friends with everybody. Get a little, get a notepad, write down names of everybody that are around there, right? So this club is no longer an unfamiliar place. It becomes your second home away from home. It's a familiar place where everybody knows your name, like the TV show Cheers. And last but not least, tip number four is find a home base inside the club. So that means one group of people who are going to be friendly no matter what. Okay, these are people that you come back to and you hang out with when you're doing your other approaches, when you're meeting other people. So let's say you're in a club, you find a home base, you go out and talk to some other girl, come back to the home base. Go out and talk to some other dudes, maybe bounce around to another group of dudes, come back to your home base, right? Your home base is where you can feel relaxed and at ease and you're not worried about making a, too much of a good impression. This is typically going to be a bunch of dudes that are out celebrating a bachelor party, just talking about sports, or it's going to be a bunch of girls that are celebrating a bachelorette party. Now listen, those are fool's gold. You're not going to meet up any, anybody from that group. You're not going to take them home because they're going to stick together, but it's at least comfortable. Uh, it could be the girls who are typically not very attractive, they're just flattered by your attention, or it could be just some random people that just happen to be there for a work event that are kind of like all nervous because they don't really know how to socialize themselves and they're just happy to talk to somebody who uh, takes the pressure off them to be so amazing, right? Because they're in their work clothes and everyone else is partying. So these are the typical groups you want to get and make your home base. Once these guys become your home base, you'll have a place you can always return to and not feel alone in the club. In fact, these are your friends and they can even be your wingman. If you meet a girl in the club, bring the girl back to this home base group. Like, oh, hey, what's up, John? Welcome back. Yeah, hey, I want you to meet Sarah. Oh, hey, what's up, Sarah? John's so cool. Yeah, I know. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it just works out great. All right, so use these four tips to get comfortable going out alone and solo. Again, it's not about motivation. It's about making a decision to stick to a plan. All right, so number one, prepare where you're going. Know where you're going to go and have an exact plan on how you're going to get there. Number two, your warm-up routine. The party starts not at the club. The party starts in your house. As Kesha says, the party don't stop till I start walking in, right? The party starts wherever you are. Number three is going to be make the people at the club your home. Get a home base from them. Get to know them. Make sure they know you. Get there early. Become friends with them. And number four is find a home base within the club. And as people are just partying and being social, you don't have to worry about being attracted to them. They're just great to have a good time with. All right? If you want more tips like this, of course, subscribe to the channel. If I see like a thousand likes on this video, I'll make more videos just about the techniques and strategies that help you at the stage where you're at. Because I want to make material that resonates with you and helps you get through your daily challenges. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep in touch. Et bienvenue à Montréal.